At the end of World War II, the Polish ambassadorial team in Bombay, led by the determined heroine Kira Banaszynska, and supported by the local Indian communities, including the principalities of Kuala Pur, Jamnagar, and several others, dictated a convoy, no, dispatched a convoy of food relief and other essentials thousands of miles to Iran, where Polish refugees from the Soviet Union labor camps had found their way on foot and were suffering, malnourished, were suffering and were malnourished, directed by Anjali Bushan, based on research of Malgojata Chasuf. And we're going to be having a Skype connection with the Indian director, and so let's begin. This is a film uh, that we've made over a long period of time. We've really researched it out. Um, and my partner, Margo Zata uh, Chozo, she's not with me right now, she's in Poland. But um, it was a really tough task. So I just want you all to know that we've gone into research with all the museums. We've uh, also gone into paperwork research where Kira had a factory, Kira Banashinska, who was the Council General's wife in 1939 in India. Uh, this event occurred in, around 1942, and uh, this was the time of the Quit India movement. Uh, so the Indian government was not there. There was no sovereign state, and we were essentially um, under the British rule. So uh, for us, this has been a very, very important film because it talks about how positively we can show uh, a way of treating refugees from any country in any other country, and, um, you know, how positively we can amalgamate um, each other and be hospitable to each other without any interference into each other's culture and live very, very comfortably. Because the Siberian Polish refugees lived in India up to eight years, some of them, and uh, they are still friends of India. They still feel like they have a home in India. So the film is My Home India from the Polish refugees' point of view. Uh, how they feel India is their home still. And they come back year after year uh, for different generations have joined in and befriended each other. Um, and the relationship continues amongst those refugees uh, who are now citizens of the world. They're citizens of different countries, be it England or the US or Canada or Australia or New Zealand, France, Argentina even, and some in Africa still. So, And some went back to Poland. So for us, it is a very, very important piece of document. And we've attempted to... Um, write a piece of history on camera uh, and show personal histories and how that makes for chapter in history that went missing and never got spoken about. Because there were more than a million uh, and a half people who were displaced and less than a million made it back. But they came sporadically from different routes, land routes, ship even to India, which was undivided India at that time, so to Karachi and Bombay. And uh, there is a small settlement uh, that was made in Kolhapur, which housed six and a half thousand people, women and children and old people primarily. And also a small school that was started in Jamnagar uh, by the uh, help of Kira Banashinska, who had a friend in the Prince of Jamnagar. Um, it was all funded by the government in exile, mind you. Uh, but people were very generous and very giving and loving to the refugees who had come. So I hope you enjoy the excerpt of the film. We are running for the Oscars. Uh, we are releasing in uh, LA on the 6th of December in Lamley and Chino theatres. And it will go on till 12th of December. Um, so we really, really hope that history can be put in perspective uh, through this film. And we are also aiming to make a very large fiction film on Kira Banashinska and her work. Thank you. Thank you very so much. Please enjoy. Bye. Thank you. The radio kept on the wash on Agar and Lamyasta Varshavi. And then we all had to go down these dugouts and enter way there for a bit. For a while, it was quiet, but then started a rest. One day you come in and there was no professor for that or other uh, subject because he was arrested. 
they deported teachers and uh, doctors and uh, um, uh, landowners, all kinds of people like that. And they put us to forest in, into work. My father died uh, pretty soon. He died in 1940 uh, in October. I was only six months old when uh, we were evacuated to Siberia. Me, my mother, and my two sisters. Wywieźli nas 14 kwietnia 1940 roku. Miałem wtedy 8 lat. I was 12 years old. I was five. Children are always worse off because they, they, they don't deserve this being deprived of, of normal life. Настрой в Индиях за всех сфер społecznych был надзвичайно приязнен и способен до польски. И я вместе обратилась до них всех с просьбой, чтобы нам помогли организовать какой-либо способ собирания помощи для уходцев, которые по завертию поразумения со Сталином были звольнены из своих лягров и обозов. Ale nie, byli da, nie było im dane żadnych środków lokomocji, tylko nie byli pozostawieni siebie. Jesteście wolni, możecie iść, ale jakimi drogami to już od was zależy. Doszło do tego, że myśmy mieli wiele tych rzeczy nazbieranych i postanowiono było, że najlepsza droga do przesyłania ich do Rosji byłaby bezpośrednio z Bombaju drogą lądową. Wtedy Mąż wpadł na pomysł, że jeżeli pójdą tam ciężarówki, wracając, mogliby przywieźć tam uchodźców. Po wielkich kontraktacjach pozwolili nam wprowadzić do Indii 550 sierot. Ostatecznie dostaliśmy pozwolenie na wprowadzenie do Indii 5,5 tysięcy kobiet i dzieci. W dodatku do początkowej grupy siery. was in a tragic situation at that time. Our debt of gratitude to the Indian nation for the selfless help, sympathy and warmth it extended to our countrymen, some of whom are here with us today, is immeasurable. Life in Mumbai, before the war, was very alive. Na początku byłem tylko zajęta tym, że myśmy mieli przyjęcia. Musieliśmy puścić przez nasz dom cały korpus dyplomatyczny i całą arystokrację bombajską. Więc mieliśmy przynajmniej dwa razy na miesiąc dużo obiadu na 16 osób. Od czasu do czasu musieliśmy mieć duże przyjęcie, mniej więcej na jakieś 150 osób. I jak zaczęła się ta robota, później już czasu nie było. Oh, 
kaita Tiputi paratya lake karatya api tumbiara Ya biku namara Kunsi pani botong Duro duro kaita Tiputi paratya lake karatya api tumbiara Ya biku namara Pewnego czasu konsulet dostał zawiadomienie z Karaci, że przyszedł statek z grupą 1500 uchodźców i żeby natychmiast przysłać tam kogokolwiek z konsulatu, ponieważ nie mogli się z nimi dogadać. Nikt nie mówił po angielsku. Załoga konsulatu nie była dostateczna, żeby można było odpowiednie siły posłać do Karaci. Nikogo nie było oprócz mnie. I met Mrs. Kira Banasinska in 1995 and uh, I was listening to Kira about her life story which started with the World War II when 5,000 and more Polish men and women were given shelter by Mr. Gaikwad, the Prince of Kolapur, and they formed their own, I would say, a small community living together. They had their own educational system, they had their own uh, cooking, they had their own culture, they had their own get-together, and they were very happily settled there. Eventually, some of them got married to Indians and they decided to stay in India. Kier was Polish and she became Indian citizen. But I said, you, you know, you can, you can have a passport to show you're Indian, but you're, you're, you're still very Polish. Spoke English with a Polish accent, you know. Loved to speak in Polish and, and uh, I love to hear her talking Polish. She's, she had rapid fire Polish. Ja nie wiem, czy, czy dlatego, że nie tylko, bo, nie tylko Anglicy tutaj, ale w ogóle niezależnie od narodowości indyjskiej, wszyscy z nadzwyczajną, z nadzwyczajną wielką sympatią i współczuciem współpracowali z nami, pomagali i, i gdzie tylko można było, prawda, starali się ułatwić życie tym uchodźcom. Myśmy otrzymywali dary najrozmaitsze dla nich. Od Hindusów, od Parsi, od wszystkich narodowości. Ja nie byłem wcale, wcale nie byłem przygotowany do tego, tylko prowadziłem tak przy pomocy ludzi, którzy też nie byli fachowcami. Tak. Tylko tego robiliśmy to, czego wymagała chwila. I was just about the age of my grandson, who was four years. The Polish camp was isolated, but I had the privilege to visit it because my father and my father-in-law had a provision store. You we assembled in Kolapur to see it once again, what Kolapur means to all of you and 5,000 refugees who stayed in Kolapur. To osiedle było świetnie zorganizowane. Dlatego, że ambicją Polaków było to, żeby 
pokazać na zewnątrz, że potrafią się Polacy sami zarządzać. Dlatego powstała cała komendantura, cała administracja tego osiedla, również powstały szkoły polskie, harcerstwo, zuchy, wszystkie, cała obsługa, infrastruktura, policja, straż pożarna, prawda, była tam, poczta, wszystko było pod władzą właściwie Polaków. Można powiedzieć, że na tym terenie to powstała mała Rzeczpospolita Polska w tym czasie. Kiedy tutaj w Europie prawda, była wojna, kraja, kraju naszego nie było, to tam całko na terenie Indii, to sobie trudno aż wyobrazić, istniała mała Polska. Kłopoty były z tym, żeby w jakiś sposób wszystko złagodzić, wszystko urządzić, wszystko zdobyć, prawda? I nic łatwo się nie daje, tylko to, że myśmy mieli masę przyjaciół w Indiach. I dlatego mnie to wszystko przechodziło dosyć łatwo, ale zajmowało pewien czas. Naturalny człowiek czasami był wściekły na to, że to nie wychodzi, to nie daje, ale w koniec końców zawsze... Jeżeli chodziło o zdobycie czegoś dla naszych ludzi, to nam bardzo łatwo szło. I, I to jest, łatwiej jest pomagać komuś niż sobie samemu, bo jak myśmy się sami znaleźli w tej sytuacji później, więc ja nigdy nie, nie prosiłam nikogo ze swoich przyjaciół, żeby, żeby mi pomogli, żeby nie psuć stosunku. Religia to jest jedna. Myśl to jest ludzka. Ludzie myślą u religii. Pan Bóg nie. Pan Bóg nie odseparował jedną religię od nas, drugą religię nam dał, czy co, wcale nie. I taka ja byłam spokojna w całej tej. Ja idę, tempel chodziłam do hinduskiej, wszystkie ich właściwie święta obchodzę, nasze święta. Nie miałam zabronione właściwie, żeby ja obchodziła swoje święta, żeby ja szła do kościoła. Kiedy chcę, do którego i kościoła idę. not particularly religious uh, as such, but she had a deep uh, religious sense, but not really a, a, in the sense of a church-going Christian. It was not that. She would have a crucifix in her bedroom and things like that. During Easter time, she would boil the eggs in onion rings, and it would have lovely shades of pink and uh, she would give me a couple of them. And she said, the, that was also a Polish custom. And uh, though she had never lived in Poland, I think she carried a lot of the, of Poland in an abstract sense within her, you know? She derived her identity from it. After the Chinese aggression, there was this uh, period when India became very strict about uh, foreigners staying here and uh, 
Kira had, uh, and her husband had to then take up Indian citizenship, decide to give up their Polish citizenship. And uh, she used to tell me that, you know, people have either a motherland or a fatherland. In Poland, they call it the fatherland. And in India, we say the motherland. So she says, I am blessed by having both a fatherland and a motherland. So in that sense, you know, she integrated both those identities into her persona. Kira was Polish, and yeah, she became Indian citizen. But I said, you, you know, you can, you can have a passport to show you're Indian, but you're, you're, you're still very Polish. Spoke English with a Polish accent, you know. Loved to speak in Polish, and, and uh, I love to hear her talking Polish. She, she had rapid fire Polish. Я не знаю, чи, чи для того, що не тільки, не тільки англійці тут, але в ОГУЛі незалежно від народовості індійської. Всісті, звичайно, з незвичайно великим симпатією, співчуттям співпрацювали з нами, допомагали. І, і де тільки можна було, правда, старалися улатвити життя тим уходцям. Ми отримували дари на розмірші для них. Від гіндусів, від парсів, від всіх народовостей. Я не була в цілі, в цілі не була приготована до цього. Тільки проводила так при допомозі людей, які вже теж не були фаховцями. Так. Тільки тільки робили ми те, чого вимагала хвиля. leaving Russia and all the hardship that we suffered, Valivoda was like a paradise to us. We felt free and normal life, but at the back of our minds, we always felt that it wasn't a real country, and we're hoping to return to Poland sometime, and from the Indian, Indian Independence Day, somehow our, our Independence Day seemed to have been moving away from us. We're hoping that it wasn't for too long, but we never, never expected that it would last so long. Are we through? Let's give it a hand.